Should I unwrap my ice cream now or later? No, we need that ASMR. Okay. Right. We need, yes, to, get, we, we need to get that that audience in there. You know, <laughs> capture that niche. <laughs> Hey, what is going on, you guys? Welcome to One of Each, the Dumb and Hungry podcast, where we talk about our food adventures and our favorite food groups. I'm Angelo, the Dumb and Hungry. And I'm Macho. And thank you for joining us. I hope you're doing all right. Macho, I hope uh, you don't get tired of hearing this theme. Um, but, uh, you know, like you said, it's somewhat nostalgic. Yeah, no, it's been a good break. No, that's all right. Good. Hey, how are you doing? I'm okay. You know, here. Okay. Existing. Hey, do you watch those uh, those Oscars? You know, I didn't. I don't really. I completely forgot about it. But good on uh, good on all the winners. Congrats to all. There of them. There you go. I hope your favorite team wins or something. I, the boy in the heron won. That's all I need to know. Yeah. Okay. That's good. Um. Good. Yeah. Thank goodness this is not uh, a film, TV, entertainment type uh, program. Oh, we'd be in the wrong wrong category for that. Way <laughs> wrong. That's fine. Stick to our strengths here. Yeah. What's going on with you? Nothing really. Um, apparently Trader Joe's. I don't know if it's new, but I have, that's my first time. So you get to have ice cream. That's uh, like a half chocolate dipped uh, what is it, ice cream sandwich. Well, why don't you open yeah. it up for us and uh, yeah. do a real time <laughs> unboxing review type thing. It's actually kind of small and a little sad, but... I mean, so it's like a, it's like tiny. I feel like they um, forgot to dip the entire <laughs> thing. Well, that's the thing, right? There's no sandwich cookie part in the on the chocolate dipped side, mm-hmm, so mm-hmm. it's just chocolate dipped uh, ice cream, and then the bottom side is the cookies. Got it. Not well, that I'm against it, but yeah, we'll try it's it. Just out. so small. Yeah, it's exactly what you expect. <laughs> It comes so, in a pack of six. Pack of six? Okay. And that's so, so, if so you it's, like that kind of thing, buy two. So it's a pack of one divided into six. Yeah, Like basically. one serving size <laughs> divided into six bite-sized pieces. So it's, I mean, uh, good, so what, the filling is like a, what, vanilla or it's something? Typical vanilla ice cream, yeah. And then you got chocolate dip and then just chocolatey sandwich thing. How does the sandwich part taste? Yeah. Very soft. Mm-hmm. It's good. So, did you just find this like uh, in Trader Joe's? Like, it's your just by yeah. chance? My sister showed it to me. I was like, oh, I'll try it. Okay. It's good. It's just so small. And I yeah. love like ice cream sandwiches are one of my favorite, like at home kind of ice cream things. Ah, okay. Good so, job. I was like, oh, yeah, hell yeah. You know, yeah, I guess I don't get to enjoy ice cream sandwiches as, um, as much. I mean, like, you know, when I get ice cream, I just order ice cream, get scoops of ice cream. Yeah, I don't even get cream. like toppings or anything, you know? Um, totally. Yeah. Not even yeah, whether toppings or even like, you know, offered as a Sunday or something. Oh, I just, not even yeah, Sundays. I just get, yeah, I just get scoops. Maybe I'm a little too plain that way. Maybe I need to change it up. No, nah, I know someone who only eats vanilla ice cream, so you're not that bad. Oh, boy. Well, I mean. The only flavor of ice cream she'll eat. You know. Vanilla gets a bad rap because you know, uh, obviously, in um, uh, it's it's obviously associated with being something very plain, you know, very simple or whatever. But um, I don't know. I think there's a lot to um appreciate about like different types of vanilla, different vanilla beans, different you know areas it comes from, and so if it's, yeah. you know, but obviously if you're just gonna get like a a, a five gallon um tub of some, you know whatever it's ice just cream vanilla yeah oh my God. <laughs> um maybe maybe we need to mix it up or something you know wow you just you just took the rest of that sandwich and you just <laughs> yeah it is bite-sized yeah it's tiny mm, that's fair tiny. well that's why there's six how much uh does it come you know how much is it per box thing i don't remember this was <laughs> okay. three weeks ago. Got it. Uh, wait, have you I don't know. have you gone through the rest of them, or uh, how many are left? Uh, about one, there are three left. So I've been doing about one a week. 
you know, ice cream wise, not really ice cream, but um, I still have stuck in my freezer like some of those um, those packs of the uh, the Dole Whip um, snack things from uh, from Costco. I don't know if you remember, I had those. I so. missed this. I, I completely missed this. Oh, or maybe I, I don't know. I'm sorry. But what? So Dole so Whip ice. It's from not Costco? as it's not as exciting as it sounds. It's actually a little more disappointing, unfortunately. Oh. Yeah, so um so Costco has offers these um packs of you know Dolt Whip, whatever, you know. Official? It's not Disney Dole Whip, but it's Dole Whip. Like the actual Dole. Okay. But um the texture's off, the flavor's off. Um, yeah, it's not creamy or smooth like you get at the Disneyland uh offerings. Okay. It, it's different. Yeah. Um so I was kind of sad. But, you know, I have to finish it. I'm not a quitter, so. <laughs> Fair. Um, no, don't worry. I'll take care of it for you at some yeah. point. We'll see. I mean, if there's any left, sure. I mean, you'll, you'll, oh, you'll, okay. you'll see for yourself. It's like it's not anything mm. like exciting. I'd, I'd rather uh, look into, like, making one, you know. Oh, yeah. Or some copycat recipe or something and try well, to. Well, I mean, they released the official recipe during COVID times. That's right. Yeah, so I'd like to try that at least, but I bet you know that's still not the same, right? Yeah, no, I they mean, have to, I mean, have to change it somehow. Exactly. Imagine if they like if they did sell like the proper you know whatever at in this Costco or whatever, then yeah, there'd be less reason to go to uh to, to Disneyland or something, you know. Um, yeah. But Dole Whip is definitely something I have, I've come to enjoy when visiting Disney. Um, but again, that's not, probably not happening again after. Uh, <laughs> soon but the month. Yeah. yeah but okay anyway um yeah but uh ice cream treats aside yeah that's pretty good pretty good um, have you been made any ice cream recently um no i haven't you know because uh, speaking of vanilla like one of the things i have been buying is the the ice vanilla ice cream from costco you know nice. the um yeah whatever that one i forget the it's the Kirkland one, you know, and mm -hmm. I'm sure they get it from a, some nice creamery thing, uh, which is similar to a, what kind of Bell vanilla is that? Yeah, the Bluebell, you know, type of um, yeah. whatever that vanilla style is, you know, that eggy mm -hmm. kind of more yeah. flavor. Anyway, I enjoy those. Um, but that's at home, you know, I still go out every now and then and get some uh, ice cream elsewhere, you know. Yeah. Um, but uh, no, I haven't. I haven't. Um, namely, because I'm lazy, you know. Fair. But it's still there. The ice cream maker's still there. I need to put it to use. I, I've had some ideas floating around. I have a bunch of lemons. I think I need to put to uh, use. Oh. So maybe I will uh, I'll utilize it for that. Much. I wanted to uh, kind of talk about a, a couple things. Um, one one place I uh, I visited recently was out in um, in Garden Grove. Um, not Oops. out there too often, um, but uh, I guess when I am, I'm <laughs> there for uh, I'm there for barbecue. <laughs> so, well, in this what case, else would you go there for? <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure. It's not like Orange County has like uh, the largest uh, concentration of like a Vietnamese population or something <laughs> where they have incredible uh, cuisine of that sort. But is it really? I actually did not know that. Oh, I mean, like you know, Westminster particularly, you know. Oh, okay. okay. Now you learn. Yeah. Today I learned. Nice. Um, I'm only ever in Anaheim for, you know. Yeah. <laughs> well, maybe not and for long. But yeah, no. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Never again. <laughs> well, um, in Garden Grove, particularly, uh, there is a new restaurant that opened, um, a barbecue spot called Smoke Queen. And um, this is uh, one of those stories of pop up turned, you know, brick and mortar. Okay. So, um, Smoke Queen started off as a pop of their OC based, um, but then um, after some time, they had a a stint at uh, at Smorgasburg, you know. So I think uh, they kind of took over when Moose Craft uh, kind of moved out. So they mm -hmm. kind of um, put them right in there, and they found a home there at Smorgasburg. Um, let me just uh, bring up a couple things here, but but they recently. Um, opened their location at uh, in Garden Grove, you know, this brick and mortar spot. 
Um, Chef uh, Winnie, I believe, is her name. She owns the uh, the establishment, so it's nice. It's um, you know, Asian owned. It's female owned. You know, there's a lot to a lot going for it, and a lot of people have been you know rooting for it. Um, and uh, so I had the chance to visit there during like kind of its opening uh, weekend. Oh, and nice. um, yeah, I mean, you know, so just a few observations. This was obviously just the very beginning. So, you know, there's a lot of things to iron out, a lot of flows of service to kind of work out and, you know, still kind of try. So, um, you know, there was a pretty strong line to start, um, you know, during that time. And so uh, the... I think what I'm used to usually, like when um, when you order, it's usually kind of a sliced order situation. Like they'll mm -hmm. slice right there as you're ordering. But I guess, you know, for their flow of service, what they do is that they take your order, just like a typical restaurant. They'll take your order, then they'll prepare it in the kitchen, and then they'll um, they give you a buzzer or something to come up to, to pick it up. Okay. Yeah, so um, first on the food, you know, we're talking about um, barbecue, Texas-style barbecue. Um, but with, in this case, with some Asian, you know, sensibilities and inspired, uh, flavors in there. Um, but, uh, this is a kind of a look of, um, you know, from Smoke Queen, from their Instagram. It looks like, uh, Chef Winnie has also appeared on uh, Food Network, uh, and a couple of things there. I haven't seen yeah. it actually. I, I think I remember hearing mm -hmm. about it, but I, I haven't seen too much of it, but, um, you know, they make the typical, you know, brisket and, and ribs and things like that. Um, but I'll talk about my meal here. Uh, but so they're actually in this complex called, it's called like Cottage Industries. So it's like a complex of like different uh, storefronts. Um, they're the only ones that are like actively there right now, but, you know, others will move in in time. But it's not just like the 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 restaurant stuff there's like you know shared seating there's like it's like a small park there's a community garden you know oh, okay. so there's it's it's a whole thing you know but um uh but just to kind of give an idea yeah i think like at the beginning when they open there's probably a line of about say 50 people or something like that um and there's probably for me it was probably maybe 20 deep or something 20 30 you know oh, in wow. that line but uh when they opened then um it only took about maybe 15 minutes to get to the front you know again because okay. they're not slicing to order right they're just yeah. taking the orders so uh that was pretty quick but what i could already tell is that seating would be uh would be mm -hmm. um a little you know a little short um i'm sure they'll work on um maybe adding more seats or something you know um, but the immediate, uh, so the inside itself, the building itself inside doesn't have any seats, but there on the outside, there's like kind of this patio area. You have like, uh, three large benches, uh, like picnic style tables. And then there's like on one side of the building, there's like a counter space for maybe a good dozen people or something like that, where you could either sit or stand. Um, and even with that counter space, like they didn't have enough chairs, you know, to kind of share. Mm. I don't know what they intend or how many they, you know, to share, but, um, uh, yeah, you could tell like, you know, seat wise, you need to probably have to, um, add to that. And then even though like throughout the complex, there are some chairs and things, uh, scattered throughout, um, some benches as well. But I think, you know, with the number of people that were being served initially, we're talking about at least again, at least 50 people, yeah, I think um, you know, there'd uh, either people would either have to eat fast or, you know, something. Um, yeah. Otherwise, they have to add more seats. Again, like the other storefronts in that complex, they'll have their own seating too. But again, there's only so much they can accommodate. And then with a restaurant like this, you know, which I think would naturally draw a larger crowd. Um, yeah, I think I think um, they'll have to they'll have to look at that. Mm -hmm. But as far as the service, you know, it was pretty, you know, pretty typical, I'd say. I think, um, you know, again, about 10, 15 minutes to order and then maybe another 30 minutes to get food, which is okay. I think like pop for if you were looking at a pop up, I think that'd be well, 
typical. Uh -huh. How much did you order? You know, the typical, you know. Typical yeah. for you or typical, typical for most people? Typical for Angelo, you know. Okay, so a lot. Oh, yeah, yeah. So let, let me, um, I don't have something to pull up here. Maybe I'll throw it up uh, later or something, yeah, unless I forget. But um, my plate, you know, again, you have to get the, um, you also have to try to get the uh, the essentials. So that includes brisket, includes pork ribs. They don't have sausage. But um, so what I'm talking about earlier about like these Asian kind of inspired mm -hmm. dishes, they offer char siu and uh, siu yuk, which is the crispy pork belly, which is like, oh, you know, like a lechon kawali for our equivalent, you know. OK. But um, yeah, just um, that's what siu yuk is. So originally I ordered brisket, pork ribs, siu yuk. Um, a sl uh, sesame like slaw um mapo chili <laughs> and okay. uh and uh this is bread pudding okay mm. so um i ordered that i got you know i checked make sure my order was right at least on the receipt which is fine and then the again like i said about 20 30 minutes the food um it's ready so i go up pick up my food i unfortunately again there's like no proper no seating food. for me you lost um, your seat instantly? No, no, I didn't lose my seat. Just I never really secured a spot. Oh, okay. okay. So people have already taken over the counter, the, the benches, obviously. So I just ended up seating, uh, getting us, uh, I ended up sitting at uh, like one of the other buildings, um, like at their patio area, but there's like no chairs there. So I'm just like, if it makes sense, like I'm just kind of sitting just around the patio. I don't know. Like there's like okay. a, like yeah. a ledge of a patio. Mm. Yeah. Okay. So I'm just like, awkwardly turning my body to get food and like eating or whatever you know it's fine uh i i personally don't mind you know it's i've i've had um i don't say worse but like i've definitely fared in different uh conditions you know uh for food you're still going to pop-ups for covid when you have to go back to your car exactly exactly so with that with that famous blanket yep no problem there you know at least i'm ready you know yeah um so i'm prepared I'm prepared for anything. Okay. Um, and, yet. <laughs> and yet here we are. But um, picking up my food. So I started eating, right? Um, eating like trying out the brisket, you know, and stuff like that. The the ribs. And I eat a couple of slices of, the, of, of some pork, right? But I realized that um, I was actually given the cha su instead of the su yuk. I had already eaten. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the okay, yeah. But thankfully not too much. So I go back, I take my tray again, like so busy. So it's like, it feels a little awkward, like carrying my tray around. But of course I need to kind of show them what I'm talking about. And thankfully, like everyone, there is still very understanding, very kind, okay. you know, and accommodating. So I tell there's a gentleman there that, you know, I, uh, let him know what had happened. And, um, I showed him my receipt as well. Like, this is what I ordered. This is what I got. And so thankfully he was just able to call, you know, to the kitchen. Uh, there's like a, it's like a, just divided by like this glass pane, you know, so they okay. can see each other, which is nice. You can see what's going on in the kitchen and vice versa. So anyway, um, the, the guy there, which I assume is probably doing what they call expo and trying to pull knowledge from Jamie or something. Mm -hmm. Those are the people. Who, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. And so, um, He's calling them just to ask, hey, can I get an order of the seal yuk, the pork belly? And so, yeah, I mean, give it a few minutes, oh, thankfully. Okay. And they just gave me another, like, just a serving of seal yuk. So, <laughs> get some extra, nice. got some extra value there. So, I'm happy about that. Um, yeah, again, it's part of, like, ironing out, you know, the service and, and the orders. I could already tell, I could already see even, like, during uh, observing that, you know, orders were... Uh, being, you know, just trying to correct orders and things like that. Oh. To, so, um, yeah, something they're still working on. So thankfully for me, like it was generally pretty, you know, positive, I think. Um, yeah. yeah, overall, you know, I've had I've had them like a couple times before at Smorgasburg. So it was interesting to kind of uh, try it here. Um, overall, it was it was pretty good. You know, um, okay. again, I've had a lot of I've had a lot of barbecue. So I think I have a certain now I'm at a point where I think I have a certain way of like how I enjoy certain proteins or how it's prepared or whatever. So, I mean, overall, it's pretty good, um, you know, and it's good to support, you know, these types of businesses, local, uh, person of color, 
female owned, things like that. Right. It's okay. good, good aspects to consider. Um, the Mapo, as far as sides, the Mapo uh, chili was something, I don't know why I didn't, I, I should have expected, but I don't know why I didn't. It was super spicy, it, wasn't it? It was pretty spicy. Yeah. Um, and it was, right. you know, when I think of a Mapo dish, usually I'm thinking tofu, right? I know yeah. like it wasn't going to include tofu, but for some reason I was still like kind of thinking just it was going it? to. Yeah. But in this case it was ground beef. So it was just ground it's beef chili. and chili. No, I know. Yeah. I know. Yeah, I don't get the, so the what Mapo. Are you okay. Uh it's more remember it's the dumb and hungry uh whatever. Yeah, fair. So always more dumb than hungry. So um the sesame slaw uh it's okay. I mean nothing to write home about, it's just a typical slaw, but with like sesame you you can taste the sesame like oil okay. and stuff that they use in there. So nothing nothing crazy, just you know, good refreshing contrast from all the meat. Um, they have a couple of barbecue sauces, like a house barbecue, and then like a spicier gochujang kind of uh, oh, okay. flavored one. And I, yeah. I did read that they have gochujang beef ribs on, uh, yeah, on certain days or whatever. Okay. Yeah. So again, if it were there, I would probably would have uh, been tempted again. And you oh, know, last beef ribs just yeah. for you. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> oh my god. And then the uh, the bread pudding um, is a uh, actually is a a kaya bread pudding. And uh, kaya is uh, a blend of coconut and pandan, mm. and so just think of just like a like a bread pudding with you know with that um, man. What do you call that stuff that you soak it in there? You know, the is it a cream, a sauce? I don't even know. <laughs> <laughs> what don't I know? But the kaya bread pudding, yeah. So it's nice. It's uh, it's got that Asian compliment of not too sweet. Um, even mm. though I would expect a bread pudding, like for what I just expect it to be just like overly sweet. I mean, just like, uh, I just want that hit of sweet, but no, this is, this is fine. Um, it's, uh, you know, the bread is nice and soaked and, you know, again, the flavor comes through the, the coconut and pandan. And, but overall the meal was, you know, enjoyable. I mean, you know, it's okay. interesting, you know, at least from where I am, it's technically equidistant, you know, to there and also to from uh to moose um oh really yeah so distance wise or time wise like it take me soon by the time so it just depends on like which direction do i want to go <laughs> and like you know which one do i want to enjoy okay. so it's good to know that uh, options you know exist um but um that was uh smoke smoke queen so i'm glad you know to see that. i hope they uh continue on and uh they're gonna start Kind of, you know, the start off small scale, um, they'll do Friday, Saturday, Sundays, and then I'm sure they'll grow and expand over time. Yeah, um, hopefully. yeah, yeah. So I think now this is again kind of getting a little off topic, but as far as Smorgasburg goes, now they have um, another vendor for barbecue, uh, a um. Texas, another Texas style barbecue that's actually based in uh, Long Beach, um, oh, okay. a, a spot called Batambong. And uh, they actually make um, Cambodian kind of uh, influenced. Uh -huh. You've spoken about this before, haven't you? Uh, I'm sure I have. I'm sure I have. I've I, I'm sure I've visited them. I visited them down here, um, down Long Beach. So um I'm glad that they have their moment there to, you know, uh, to share their food um, to a big, big audience. But they, they're pretty popular down in Long Beach. You know, even they have a good, they get good audience, good uh, community out here. So, um, yeah. So, Batambong uh, by the uh, Cambodian chef, chef, Chad, I think, known as the Cambodian Cowboy. Yes. So, Chad Fong looks Chad like Fong, yeah, that's it. Yeah, but yeah, so that's who's uh, kind of uh, taking over. That. That's that's nice. There. It's always going to be a barbecue spot in that uh, for that spot, isn't it? I know. Thankfully, thankfully, yeah. good for Smorgasburg. Yep. Um, but hey, you know, speaking of uh, more food, you know, um, just want to thank uh, our listeners, our viewers. You know, uh, thank you, my Chow, as well. You know, really. Really, what we're saying is that we want to thank our few and only fans um, for joining us. You know, as we continue to talk about these food adventures, 
these local spots and pop-ups, good food, good people, and a whole lot of nonsense. So, um, yeah, thanks again. Uh, just a couple, just one thing I wanted to follow up on. We mentioned uh, last week, you know, it kind of started on a, a little of a down note, and um, we had I'd mentioned uh, about some uh, some chefs, some LA based chefs who had passed recently, and I'm not sure why. I, I'd shared the information on the uh, on the show notes of of the previous episode, but I didn't actually name them uh, here. I'm not sure why. Just kind of um, blurred there, uh, but that was uh, Chef Jonathan Whitener of um here's looking at you and all day baby and uh and jared standings uh from um standing uh butchery in um what area is that i it's like on melrose and and uh la brea you know next to the golden apple oh, there you yeah you've yeah. talked about that place before yeah and they uh they did a pop-up there for uh for burgers really great burgers and um yeah, it's uh, it's it's a shame on you know on both counts for both of them, um, they lost uh, lost such great uh, figures for the uh, restaurant industry and for just the community of you know that they serve. So, uh, those restaurants are still you know still going. They're still going strong. I think, uh, you know, here's looking at you all day, baby. It's um, you know, was co-owned with uh, you know, their partner. Um, what's her name? Lian Lian Ta, I think. So, um, they're still, they're still doing their thing. You know, they still are making great food. Um, all day babies out there in uh, silver Lake. And, uh, here's looking at you is out in K town. Um, and then as far as, uh, Jared, uh, for Jared standing, standing butchery, um, I, they've recently, you know, decided to continue, uh, running the, uh, the spot. So, you know, uh, I don't know about I don't don't think about the you know the burger part of it the pop up but as far as the um, the butchery goes they'll they'll still do that um, yeah so that that's something just to kind of uh, follow up on but um, continuing uh, on more uh, more to come uh, you really brought it back with a uh, with a really strong uh, adventure um, oh yeah and, Japan and- was. Was was a trip, I will say. It certainly was. It was literally a trip, and it was quite a trip. Um, yeah. But can you remind us uh, where where we're at here, where we kind of left off? And all right, well, we started off landing in Japan. What was it Narita Airport? So far from Tokyo, but but uh, the bigger airport, I think, um, in the that area. Ended up at a Pom Pom Pern Hotel. You know, uh, in Ginza, the Mitsui Garden, Mitsui Garden Hotels. Um, never forget the corn soup. My favorite, mm-hmm. my favorite thing of all vending machines. That hot corn soup in the winter. It's great. Uh, went to a bath, the uh, Ryokan, partially. What inspired the the art of? What is it? Spirited Away. Right. Did the whole bathhouse thing. Still kind of weird, but. I guess we're, we're it is what it is. When when in Rome, right? Uh, YOLO, YOLO. Yeah, it's fine. There's only two people I knew in there. <laughs> the weird. I, I, anyway, um, that Ryokan was good. Three tiers of service. We got like now I know the difference between tiers three and two. I need to know what tier one gets you. Mm-hmm. Uh, how much more service can they possibly provide? Oh, I'm we sure already got whale meat mm-hmm. and the Wagyu beet butter. Very important. Uh, got snowed in basically or snowed out, I guess, out of Tokyo for an extra five hours. That was wild. And then the walk to the hotel after mm-hmm. I the close. That's the closest I've been to death. I swear. Oh, man. Okay. As an L.A. native. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Especially. Yeah. Yeah. So, but, you know, it's a good trip so far. The next day, we ended up in Kyoto, of all places. I went to that Pokemon Center, which was nice because there was no line. It was great. Did a lot. Of, did a couple of the big temples. Got the uh, the Arashiyama Bamboo Forest, and of course the iconic Kiyomizu Temple in a kimono, which was cold as hell. 
because I did not wear any thermals or extra layers of anything, unfortunately. Right. Again, being from L.A., just woefully unprepared. Honestly, it rained last weekend. I didn't even look. I didn't look at the weather. <laughs> and like I was walking to get lunch in the rain. I was like, with no umbrella. Mm-hmm. I was like, oh, no. So that's just just how it is in L.A. You don't look at weather reports. You don't think you need to. No. Okay. But that's that basically wrapped up where we finished off last episode and uh, headed for more interesting things. That was the first week, basically, of yeah. uh, my trip to Japan. Yeah. So the whole next week is all in one, thankfully, in one location. Good. Well, let's catch up with our uh, our other selves here and uh, and listen in on lots more weeb things. It looks like what's coming up here something that is very important very important to me <laughs> because i needed to try it okay let's uh let's get into it well, look at yeah. let's see what we got here <laughs> it's taco bell it's like i thought we were back home already or something but uh... no, no 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 this is this is important okay this is taco bell in shibuya it's like uh-huh. the first taco bell in japan okay it was pretty good actually um We'll say I don't remember what the orders were. They didn't have Baja Blast, which was a disappointment. Mm. Um, but it looks like that's a, Oli and I. We got fry. They had loaded fries, kind of thing with the seasoned beef on top. Um, that's a five layer burrito, I think, uh, and then two soft chicken tacos. Mm. The chips were pretty good, actually. They had like seasoning on it, like a cheese seasoning of some kind, and also lemon. Like they were, there was a little citrus on there, which I'm surprised we don't do here, honestly. On uh, on what the um... on anything? Well, uh, specifically on the on the chips here. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. And the you're, fries. Was... You're sur- you're surprised we don't do something like that? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. It's just it, it's nice. It's good. Uh, yeah. You get there's four sauce packets there. You only get two per order, mm. and if you want to order more, twenty yen, which is like pennies, but still the principle of the matter right exactly how dare you yeah um but it looks like y'all got mild i mean you didn't go for like is there anything hotter than that they got i don't remember i don't think that was an option <laughs> okay but also that's all these favorite sauce so maybe there were other options i see but she wanted to try the mild in uh, japan so from the ones you from the ones you tried here okay so how was it overall like how does it compare to what we have it was good it was of course smaller portions not enough lemon Added a nice little, a nice little thing, yeah, to all the stuff, um, but not greasy enough. Not greasy you enough. Know, Taco Bell, you want the greasy seasoned beef, you know, like you want it dripping out of your, out okay. your burrito. Okay. I yeah, I guess that's not their style here. It's not, but it was good. It was still good. Okay. To be fair, I would go again. No, uh, I wouldn't. It's Japan. I got it. I got better things to do, <laughs> but I had to try it. But it is fascinating, you know, to try fast food in in other countries, you know. Oh yeah, um, we did McDonald's there. I we did Yoshinoya there. Um, I did not, however, get to try the Wendy's there. Mm, yeah, something always came up. That's too bad. Um, yeah, but uh, yeah, I mean, it's interesting because you know, I, I'm sure. I mean, there's it's going to be obvious, like oh, it you know. There's a consistency, but there's also a difference, I think, in the taste and, you know, um, yeah, presentation, for obviously. Pa- for the different regions, palate. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. Um, but, you know, in, in America, you know, it's kind of unfortunate we rely all too much on highly processed, you know, ingredients mm. and food. So, you know, and and um, what I noticed, too, um, kind of going on a tangent from what I observed, like... Um, Let's say I'm in the Philippines or something, and um, mm-hmm. you know, obviously they they have a love of fast food chains there too, to an extent where some of these locations are very well respected, and these locations look a lot nicer than you oh. know, like a <laughs> like an up you know elevated or an whatever, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. Um, it looks very nice, you know, and the food's still you know familiar, but um, it's presented differently so nicely yes. or whatever you know mm-hmm. um so i can imagine you know something similar uh here you know uh with uh, in japan um with fast food as well you know yeah definitely i mean like i don't think i took pictures of yoshinoya but yoshinoya there's like a, a table service kind of restaurant oh my gosh yeah yeah 
That's so, uh, which is cool. That's funny. It's like Yoshinoya. It's like you would think, you know, is that that's uh, did it start? I don't know. Did Yoshinoya start in uh, Japan? Yes, is it, it is. Oh, okay. it is Japanese. <laughs> <laughs> Just want to make sure. Yes. Oh, like, uh, not an American invention or something that just like uh, culturally appropriates. Um, you, I, know. you know what? I never thought about it that way. I don't think so. I'm pretty sure it started in Japan, um, considering, but I, got, I do not need to know now. Okay, look it up. And uh, to our listeners as well, if you know where Yoshine uh, originated from, please email us at hi.dumbhungry.com. Oh, um, my God. Mm-hmm. Established in Japan in 1899. <laughs> <laughs> you look very, just look very I'm perplexed. So surprised. Yeah. 1899. It's, uh, yeah. At the turn That's of the crazy. century, really, you know, not one, but two yeah. centuries, you know, of uh, of innovation. So. That is wild. Yeah. Beef bowls and um, clam chowder. <laughs> well, well, let me tell you now. There are other uh, Yoshinos over there. Yeah. They got fried chicken. They got curry. <laughs> they got eel. They have soups of some kind. I didn't yeah. get a soup. But yeah. Like, Yoshino is legit, dude. Yeah, no. I, that's great. I mean, shoot. We, we do need to bring some of that over here. Get some better treatment. Um, I don't know if the quality will be the same, considering. But I don't think so. Be nice. I don't think so. But um, it's good to know that they uh, they actually take it seriously over there and actually do it justice. So, um, um, okay. Twenty five years. Oh my God. <laughs> All right. Let's see what else we got going on here. Uh, another uh, familiar character. Oh, so. Yeah. Backstory on all this is this is our first night in Tokyo. Uh-huh. Um, we came back from Kyoto. We went to our hotel to check in. Our hotel is in Asakusa. Um, I had American dollars that I wanted to exchange because the exchange rate would be is usually more favorable if you get it in Japan. Sure. Mm-hmm. Uh, I was looking for an exchange place near our hotel, like ten minutes away. Closed down forever. Who knows how long ago? We don't know. <laughs> um, so I was like, all right, let's just go to the one I know of that I know is still open in Shibuya, which mm-hmm. was about a forty-minute train ride away. Oh my gosh. Um, because we were at one exchange, end of the line. To exchange currency? I mean, I guess this was also when, just to get a little space from the rest of the group, just because um, it was more of just a space. Kind of. <laughs> kind of part of it, yeah. <laughs> okay. We, we, we were You've already, for too, you already too had often. enough. It's Yeah, you're there for like, oh man. It was a week at this point, and it was okay. like, all right, I need to do. I so need, that's I to the limit. To okay. People. I see. Yeah. That's fair. Yeah. So, but like, we were at one end of the of the Ginza line, the gold line, mm-hmm. and the Shibuya station, complete other end, like the two last stops. Yeah. Um, yeah. It was about 35, 40 minutes. Uh, so we went to Shibuya. Uh, plot twist. The exchange place closes at 5 p.m. Okay. We got there at 8. Um, <laughs> oh, man. So we were just said, fuck it, let's just walk around, uh, walk around Shibuya and just explore, just enjoy our time. It was just mm-hmm. me and Oli. Mm-hmm. Um, I found another exchange place, not as good a rate, but whatever. I I did some just to get cash because I didn't, I had no more cash. Yeah. Um, and I wanted to go to the Shibuya Parko, which is Parko is like a big ch- chain mall kind of thing in mm-hmm. like our Westfield, but fancier. Okay. Um, well, there are some fancy Westfields though. Uh, but this is like all the stores are fancy in Parkos, and uh, this is one of the Nintendo stores. Interesting. They close at nine. By the time we get there, it's like eight thirty. Yeah. So conveniently, because before, at least when Oli went last year, you had to get a ticket to get into a Nintendo store Um, because it was just a lot of uh, easier than having lines, I guess. I don't know. Mm. Uh, When we got there, at least you could just go walk in. It was empty enough because it was last 30 minutes. They didn't care. Um, So Oli went ham on Animal Crossing stuff here as well. Yeah, sure. Which is fine because this was when we were like, oh, yes, this is when we can start buying all the little things. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. all the souvenirs and stuff because we don't have no more trains to catch just a plane yeah okay so what do you uh, think so about the Nintendo store how how large are we talking about the store uh, did you go to the New York one yes uh, maybe double the size of that one one and a half times the size of that one maybe okay Um. which is nice because they had a lot of stuff they had like they had a bunch of Zelda stuff. They had a bunch of Mario stuff, of course, mm-hmm, but even mm-hmm. Splatoon and like stuff that you don't really see here. 
they had more in stock there. Okay. Which is really cool. Yeah, no, that sounds good. Uh, are these other picks also from the uh, from the Nintendo store? Let's see. Actually, no. This one is from the Capcom store, which is right is that... next to it. Oh, okay. Um, Convenient. Yeah, in the same mall, same floor. Uh, it's not as nowhere near as big as the Nintendo store. It's like a lot smaller, but it's still really cool because it's a Capcom store. Like there aren't that many. Uh, so just seeing one was cool. And uh, remind me, uh, what is this a reference to? This is from Monster Hunter. That's Rathalos, the King of the Skies. Uh-huh. And that's a sword made from Rathalos scales. Yes, of course. How could I have missed that? Um, yeah, but it's a it's Monster Hunter reference. Because um, by this point, it was like five minutes to closing when I got to the Capcom store. Got it. Uh, so so I had they, to they'd also it. close at nine or whatever. Yeah, you know? the whole mall closed at nine. The whole mall, yeah. Yeah. Which okay. I'm a little sad I didn't go back to because there was a lot of stuff that I wanted to look at. Yeah. But Okay. But at least you know it exists. I mean, were yeah. you? All, oh yeah. I'm sorry. Did you already know? I mean, even though you didn't really intend to to end up there, I mean, did you already know like that was there? Yeah. Okay. Uh, what, like I was looking at parkos. That was one of my things that I wanted to do in Japan. Like go okay. to a bunch of different parkos. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So I was looking at their store, their floor guides. So I knew this Capcom store was there, and I wanted to visit it. Oh, good. Okay. And you you did get a little bit of time in there. Um. Yeah. That's this not- is another Pokemon Center. Okay. All oh, right. Uh, right next to the Nintendo store, actually. This is different. This is still different. This is just straight up Pokemon. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Only Pokemon stuff there. Uh, that was closed by the time I got there. Okay. But uh, clearly so you still see it. Like, uh, oh, yeah. It's fine. Like, that's right at the entrance is, or exit, whatever. Okay. Mm-hmm. Of the Pokemon store. So, or Pokemon yeah. Center. Okay. But it's Mewtwo. In a, in a capsule. It's like, ah, oh, yes. <laughs> the so, I remember this bastard. Okay, so how long? Um, so you, I mean, you were there like, yeah, till closing. It's about mm-hmm. half an hour or something or so. Yeah. Um. Okay, and then how much more did you spend? You know, in that area in Shibuya. You know, afterwards. Uh, mm-hmm. uh, not too much longer. Maybe another hour at most. We're just wandering around because a lot of stuff, other stuff, closed later, which was nice. Um. I forgot to mention this. This yeah. was the weekend where Taylor Swift was doing her concerts in Japan. Oh, wow. Uh, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, that's right. Uh-huh. Yeah. So in that certain, like right past the jungle, uh, jungle, the scramble crossing in Shibuya, yeah. uh, where from the station, mm-hmm. they're blasting Taylor Swift music. Oh, sure, man. Yeah. Of course. Yeah. She is a, there's no language barrier for her. No, of course not. No. Yeah. Swift, Swift uh, I saw some that. white guy singing along to, uh, her songs. I was yeah. also singing along. We met eye contact. It was it was a moment. <laughs> it's like two fucking weird foreigners singing Taylor Swift songs in the middle of Japan. Look at that, Taylor Swift uh, humanizing the human condition. There, that's pretty good. Yeah, yeah. Um, that was really cool. I did not expect that at all. <laughs> no, I bet not. I'm not sure if he did either. Yeah. So that's good. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Cool. Uh. So that was at Shibuya Parko, right? Um, yeah okay so we just it was just a random whim that we decided to go that day so it was our first day back into tokyo and that was the first thing we did basically mm. <laughs> go okay. shopping um it looks like this last set um you know kind of talks about like the rest of the week in tokyo yeah, which again you yeah. mentioned you spent the most time in so it mm-hmm. makes sense that you have uh, more to share here um which is pretty good let's um Oh, Jesus. Let's see what we have here. Yeah. That was a nice little ca- uh, Cafe Rock, I guess is what it's called. Uh, cafe Roku, which mm-hmm. is Cafe Six. Um, nice little diner or brunch place that we found, like, not too far from the Asakusa station. Um, that omelet was really fluffy and good. The bacon mm. was great. The waffle was nice. And it's it's like a simple plate, but it's just like, looks really nice. Yeah. I liked it. It was mm. good, and it was like under ten bucks for all for that. Nice. And American at this point, uh, where were you staying? Um, uh, we were in Osakusa, mm-hmm. uh, so near the that big temple that is that you see sometimes in manga and anime, where there's a giant temple and there's a bunch of stalls lined up in front of it. Um, it's a Sensoji Temple, is what it is, and we were like a block from it, our hotel. Okay. All right. Um, 
So this is how things start. That's pretty good. Um, yeah. Oh yeah. This was the next morning. We we're like, all right, let's go get breakfast. And this okay. is what we found because okay. our hotel did not offer breakfast. Our hotel was sad. Wow. The room didn't, was tiny. Didn't get that top tier uh, service, huh? No. Cause this one was like a nine. This was our nine stay. So we made this the cheapest stay. Okay. Um, which was a mistake. Now I know. I mean, yeah. I mean, you stay there the longest, so I don't know. I imagine that you went a little more well, amenity, but okay. I didn't think, honestly, I didn't think it was going to be that, that bad, but mm. the rooms were tiny. Like, think the size smaller than your living room. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Maybe about a third of the size of your living room. That's small. Yeah. Yeah. It was, it was tiny. Mm -hmm. And we had all our crap that we bought uh, that we had right. to deal with. Right. Um, so there was like no floor, basically no floor. It was just the bed, small desk, the hallway to get out, which was maybe about a three by three at most. Mm -hmm. um, and then all our luggage and stuff on the floor. So. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. I don't know how you do it. Uh, okay. <laughs> okay. It was, I don't even know, honestly. Yeah. Oh man. All right. Uh, uh Bara. Okay. Yes. I did go to Akih Akih Akihabara, I guess. I don't know how you say it. But that is, was that iconic Sega arcade mm -hmm. uh, that closed down in 2020, maybe? Uh, yeah, I think so. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, where every floor on that, like those stairs or escalator, I don't know, that all said Sega on it. It used yeah. to. Yeah. And now it's just the two floors of that Gigo, which is an arcade, and I have no idea what's upstairs. I, I went up those stairs. Every other door is locked, so I, I don't know. Really? Okay. Yeah. So I don't know what's there now, which is a little sad because it was iconic. But I'm glad I was able to see it before it disappeared. Because mm -hmm. uh, when Oli went last year, it was already gone. Interesting. So, very okay. sad. Yeah. As a, as a nerd who loves arcades, it, it was a big deal for me. Yeah, exactly. Um, now, Ryan, is this area... Um, is this the place that like... Okay. Yes. Yes. Yes, it is. Okay. Where you can find all your weeb stuff that you mm -hmm. could possibly want, like a bunch of video games, a bunch of figures and stuff. Like that's one of the biggest areas of of weebdom that you could go to in Japan. Okay. It's like the mecca. Of Basically. Weebdom. Yeah. Yeah. Like every every few feet, you can go into like a, another anime store with that has different stuff from the one right next to it. Yeah. Uh, there's like five different Gigo arcades and then like three other, four other smaller like mom and pop run arcades. Uh, so. So did you get really to cool, spend honestly. much time in there or? Um, yeah, saying, like, I'd say so. Because okay. like, oh, it was when this, this week long stay in Tokyo where Oli had a lot more appointments with her friends that mm -hmm. live in, in Japan. Yeah. So I spent a lot of my time alone here because all the gigos have free Wi-Fi, which is very important when mm -hmm. you have no internet uh, and video games because that's my whole, that's my whole thing. Hmm. Okay. I like weeb crap and video games. Yeah. Those are my defining factors after food. Okay. Very important. Yeah. Very important. Um, oh, I didn't take food. a picture of Yoshinoya. I can see that. How cool. Oh, thank God. This is, uh, Yoshinoya was actually having a collab with Roni Kenshin while we were there. Mm -hmm. So, that's like Rony Kenshin printed on a, a seaweed. Oh, I see. I see. Yeah. And, uh, and it comes uh, with like a, a random acrylic stand uh, as well. Is that seaweed edible or is it collectible? Yeah. yeah. Oh. No, you can okay. you still eat it. Oh, no. Okay. I did. Okay. If it wasn't, then I'm still fine. Yes. <laughs> so so what are, we're out. looking at a, what, a beef bowl and... Uh, yes. You have to try it, right? Compared to how it is here. Yes. Uh, it tastes the same. The gyudon is good there too. It's just... Looking at that price, what is it, 600 yen? Oh my mm -hmm. God. Four bucks for the Veroni Kenshin set. I, so that, 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 that Gyudon bowl, the, the seaweed, and the little acrylic stand thing. That's okay? Or what do you think? Yeah, it's, it's insanely it's like half price of what we pay here. All right, all right. Um, and then that uh, that's curry that yes. they serve in, yes. in that Yoshinoya. It was good. It wasn't like traditional Japanese curry either. Um, Oli tried it as well. She compared it. She it kind of reminded her of mole. Ah, um, Oli mole. I don't know. It kind of did, but it was good. It, like 
I wish our Yoshi and I would have that here. Again, you're considering this is from a like a fast food, you know, chain or something. Yeah. So all yeah, considering well, it's fast food sit down chain here. Yeah. Like it's table all table service. Table service, it's, amazing. Yeah. And no tips. That's what I was gonna say. It's kind of crazy, you know. Give you service, yeah. you don't tip. Uh, that, just, that, that alone brings the price down of everything so much. Like yeah. not just the exchange rate, not just the cheaper prices, but mm-hmm. also no tip. Exactly. You've, I will retire there with my pension. <laughs> that is my goal. If you live off your pension, uh, you live like a pension, king. my 401 and my 457. Right. Exactly. That's the plan. Yeah. That's live like a king. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. In my older years. <laughs> God. <laughs> so far away. Oh man. Um, all uh, right. This is in Harajuku. Uh huh. Um, uh, that's that famous street, the 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 really well known street. That's a tourist attraction, Harajuku Takashita Dori or Takashita Street, I guess. Um, it's just a crepe because Harajuku is known for the crepes, right? I had uh, I had one last time from a different place, so I, I had one here, like a berry crepe thing with cream with a not, not necessarily cream cheese, but a cheesecake. Mm. Uh, and it's just interesting because it is a little different, like. Now there's a Daiso there, uh, like a three floor Daiso. And there's like a that Capcom capsule lab to the left is just a two story thing of Capcom gotcha machines. Um, those things where you you can get little prize thingies that come in a capsule, uh, but you don't know what it's going to be. Uh, which Ariel and Salem spent a lot of time in more, more Ariel than anyone else because mm-hmm. gotcha's got them hard. Because it's like here, gotchas are. 8 to 10 to 12 dollars for some of the stuff but the same gotchas in japan are like 500 yen at most so at most like is it three and a half bucks for the most expensive gotchas that yeah. we have here mm-hmm. so it it's a lot easier to get what you want because you can keep trying yeah that's right um how is daiso over there yeah Huge, very huge. Okay. Um, because like our Daiso's here, one floor, right? Everything in Japan built, it's built vertically, yeah. Basically, um, but not just Daiso. Like, like there, there was one I went to in Kyoto because I had to buy an umbrella because it was mm-hmm. raining. Mm-hmm. Um, it's one of those clear umbrellas I have it right here, actually. Uh, but it's like three hundred yen oh. for the umbrella, which is like okay. two bucks. Yeah, yeah. Um, but they still have a lot of stuff that's a hundred yen. That uh, that unlike here, where now it's what 150, 175 for Daiso things, right? Um, and then they actually have another store, uh, a sister store called Three Coins, where everything's three hundred yen, but it's a little more upscale stuff. Mm. Um, and then there was one we went to in Kyoto that we saw that was like a not natural Lawson, but it had like it was like more of a home goods kind of store, but still okay. another Daiso sister store, mm-hmm. um, and it was more like an Urban Outfitters in terms of stuff but cheaper okay okay so that was really cool yeah um daiso is huge in japan yeah how long would you spend in harajuku uh that time we just did the one day like everything was just like a day or so to take a look at because it was one of the places to check out right Mm -hmm. um Mm -hmm. lafer there's a mall there called lafere which is pretty well known for like subculture fashion stuff uh a lot of lolita stuff is in like i guess that used i don't know if it still is but i guess it used to be the go-to place the go-to mall over there was lafari to get lolita stuff because there's still an ap and a baby the two biggest the two big brands of lolita are there okay um but even along takashita dori there's like a store called body line which had like the, the cheaper stuff that they could they could make outfits with pair stuff with i don't know i don't know the details not my not my not my scene i guess i see but, but I th- even like the in la Foray, in the basement section there was because there's like three basement floors and like six per floors or whatever um there's like one of the techware brands that are a lot of the uh i guess hype beast uh brands here are trying to like uh, uh, take inspiration from uh, is apparently there 
which is really cool. I didn't realize they have like something. I would find something that I would like over there, but uh, apparently there was. Okay. Wow. So it's not just Lolita. It's like all sub uh, yeah. subculture fashion styles. Yeah. 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 Um, what else? I don't, I, I can't believe I didn't take a picture, but like we, uh, that was the night we went to Gyukatsu, um, which is, I guess, a chain that has, it's like a katsu place where they cook it mostly for you, but you finish it on a stone plate on, at your table um, for each slice. Uh, Oli called it her favorite, uh, her favorite meal while we were there. Oh, okay. That, is that different from this katsu I'm seeing here? Uh, let me bring that up. Like from this one? I did take a picture. Okay. Oh, hey, look at that. Yes. That's like right. the... Uh, that's from Gyukatsu. You get uh, that's your set meal. Yeah. Uh, on the top right, that's actually the burner for the stone plate on top, where you would cook, where you would finish off your meat. Yeah. So, um, what? Which? Yeah. Which? Which katsu is this? What kind of katsu are we looking at? It's beef. Okay. Um, of some kind. I don't think that's the wagyu one. I think only got the wagyu one. Okay. But. Also, interestingly enough, it was, I guess I didn't take a picture of that one, but it was Valentine's week while mm-hmm. we were there. Mm-hmm. So they were doing, if you, uh, if you follow them on Instagram, they gave you a little heart-shaped uh, croquette, which was pretty cool. Okay. Wait. It was the only store. I, I don't do it. It's like, I, I just want to eat. Okay. But it was the only like restaurant that did something like that mm-hmm. that we, when we went to. So I'm surprised. So the, uh, cool. the katsu here... Um... Yeah, I mean, so this is from a chain, but yeah, how would you, um, yeah, what would you think about the about it? Um, it was good. <laughs> it was very good. Okay. Um, Oli again described the wagyu as meat butter. So yeah. And what are in these uh, other uh, containers? Well, one is miso on the bottom right, but like the top left one's like a peanut sauce mm-hmm. um, that you can use. Uh, the bottom left container is rice uh, that you would then pour uh, your egg, that that egg on, on yes. top on the right, on your rice, which is yeah. good. Uh, one of those sauces is sesame oil. I don't know what the other two are. Okay. I honestly am not a sauce guy for, for meat. Yeah. I just eat it as it comes because mm-hmm, mm-hmm. it should be good enough on its own, right? It's It showcases the flavor of the meat. That's fair. Um, how much does the meal like this go for? This was a little more expensive um, by in yen standards, but it was still like, man. Okay. Can I zoom in on that? What is that? It was like less than 15 bucks, if I remember correctly. Okay. That's not, that's not bad. And uh, with a drink, I think that drink was a thousand yen. So, I mean, maybe 20 bucks with an alcoholic drink. Mm. Nice. Okay. Um, there's more to see food wise. Is this from be from a different place i don't know yeah this is from a, a different place the next day we were at a we went Oli and i went to ikebukuro looks like yeah um which is another it's not too far from akihabara actually it's just another station over i guess it's another kind of anime ish area a lot more anime merch can be found there mm. um but this is like a we were in a mall we were in one of the parkos actually um because they have two parkos here they have a parko and a parko prime um is Prime uh, supposed to be better or something? No, I think they just like bought another building and like Parco just bought another building to have a, have a mall there. Got it. Uh, I don't okay. think it. Yeah, I think they've just like you know like Glendale Gallery and Americana. Hmm. Um, but this is like an Oma race that we that we found there at one of the food courts. Okay. Uh, it's like a corn, creamy corn kind of thing. Uh, it was good. I really liked it. But I like corn. I like cream. Yeah. Can't go wrong. I like eggs. I like rice. It's perfect. Yeah. It's good. It was really good. It's like, <laughs> this was maybe five bucks. Okay. Food is so cheap over there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Cheap and no tip. So. Yeah. Um, wow, what the hell? I know. I know. Is yeah. this, so this uh, is on the, this is the, on moment. the way down? We saw this, this Don Quixote. Uh, it's like a Japanese chain of like super, super, like, Super cheap stuff, but it has everything. Um, kind of like a better, like a Walmart mixed with uh, like 
a pharmacy, like a wall, like a Walgreens, but nicer, well, so a you lot mean nicer. Walmart. No, I mean, don't. I don't know. Does Walmart. I, does Walmart have a. I forget. I guess, but like it, it's not as big as a Walmart would be. Right. Of course. Of course. Yeah. Um, so it's like a downscaled one. But so I just you, took a picture of this. Uh huh. We didn't go into that one. So okay. I completely forgot about that one because there are so many Don Quixotes we actually went into. Got it. But I just took a picture of this because that whole building would be that Don Quixote. And like, look at that stupid penguin coming out of the top. Yes. Almost like what, King never Didi. Has but, yeah, kind of, I guess. It is a penguin. <laughs> That's Don Pen, the mascot for Don Quixote. Got it. Um, Interesting. I just wish we had like architecture like this here. Because look at how cute that is. Yeah, it's nice. Um, it's, he's like popping out of the building. That's so cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, man. So um, so you're saying it, this is a chain of uh, like stores or something? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Like uh we we went to cuz we only went in with a carry on. Mm -hmm. Um cuz we were expecting to buy luggages at Don Quixote cuz it's like cheaper. It, like we uh, we got the the max size for a carry on or for the max size for a check-in. Uh it was like less than 80 bucks um for a hard case. Oh, I see. So it was nice. And they have like, they have everything mm -hmm. in a Don Quixote. They got, they got clothes, they got costumes, they got a pharmacy, they got souvenir stuff. They have uh, character merch for anime stuff. They got video games. They got, um, they got adult toys. They got a lot of makeup. They got con like uh, colored contacts. Mm -hmm. It's just anything you can think of that you'd want to buy probably isn't a Don Quixote. Yeah. Okay. And they're all over the country. Interesting. Okay. Or at least all over Tokyo. I don't know. Um, and Kyoto, which is really cool. Cause, and their mascot's so cute. They have their own theme song. It's great. Oh, we kept singing the theme song. We got a giant ass plush okay. of Don Quixote. Yeah. Of Don Pen. Oh, wow. Uh, Cause he was A, tax free. B, A was just so big and cute. I was like, all right, go get it. Mm -hmm. And they, they, they struggled to put it in the tax free bag. Oh, wow. Um, it took two people. It was hilarious. Uh, it was it uh, wouldn't have fit in our luggage, honestly, without being squished. Um, it's great. But it Don survived Pen. the trip. Oh, yeah. Here, let me, let me grab it. Give, okay. Show it to you for scale. Think of Don Quixote like Super M, I guess, for in in the Philippines. Yeah. OK. Yeah, I guess simple, similar, but not as big because Japan's they got to build vertically. But look at this mother. Look at this big ass thing. <laughs> I mean, like, when you him, yeah, on okay. my shoulder, yeah, yeah. Now when you do it that way, yep, yeah. it's sizable. It's bigger than Machi. <laughs> <laughs> but he's so cute. I yeah, love it. and this was three thousand yen. Wow, twenty bucks for a plus the size. Not bad. Ugh, tax free too. My God, I wish things were so so much more consumer friendly out here. Well, I'm wondering with this next one, I'm wondering if you could have brought this one back. Um, <laughs> oh, I would have if I could have. Uh, that's in Ikebukuro in Sunshine City. Um, there's, it's a, like a cafe called Pikachu Sweets. Mm -hmm. um, it's basically just like snacks and drinks that you can get if, uh, that are very Pokemon themed. Uh, and this Pikachu is one of their displays there. Interesting. I, we didn't get one of the drinks, but there's a drink you can get there that if you know Pokemon, there's a teapot Pokemon uh -huh. and they actually pour it out of the teapot Pokemon. I don't know. I think it's a definitely later generation. Yeah. It's, it's uh, either this current one or the one right before. Definitely don't know. Is this part of the yeah. cafe? Oh no. Is this a different one? No, this is later on. Oh. Uh, this is that night at, uh, that's the Karomi cafe. It was a pop-up uh -huh. cafe, um, in, Shinjuku, mm -hmm. where it's Kuromi, so it's themed off that San Reno character, Kuromi's oh, Winter Party. Okay, uh huh. Um, it was literally the last day of that cafe and the last time slot for that cafe that we did. Oh wow, you're lucky to grab. It. Do you have to reserve? Yeah. Is that what it is? Or yeah, you have to do okay. reservations. Mm -hmm. Um, we did that one specifically because his friend Devon was going to meet us there that day. Okay. That's when she came to Tokyo. That's when she landed in Tokyo and went straight to, well, not straight to here, but uh, part of her itinerary was to come here. This specific thing is a cheesecake because obviously I would get a cheesecake if it's on the yes, menu. Of course. Although I don't like, 
I don't really like Japanese cheesecake. Because um, mm, mm-hmm. it's not like, I don't know, it's not like New York style cheesecake, which I, right. is what I am really right. into. Right, right. Yeah. But this so, one I think was New York style cheesecake. It looks like a New York style, right? Yeah. But it was okay. <laughs> okay. It was only okay. Uh, is this okay? Uh, I'm not sure. <laughs> Looking this at was here. the next day uh-huh. um, at the Final Fantasy XIV Eorzea Cafe. Uh, ah. Which I was super mm-hmm. into because the, I like Final Fantasy XIV. Yeah. Um, all this food was good, though. I will say I did enjoy everything I had here. Um, that's like a, a curry rice thing with that guy's face there. Yeah. Um, on a wafer, printed on a wafer. There's a lemon waffle thing uh, on the right. And then the middle thing is a fish cake shumai. Okay. So everything well, I thought uh, everything I ordered would be shadowbringers related but i forgot that this the curry rice thing was not but i had to get it because the face is a meme yeah interesting so so this cafe just specifically does final fantasy 14, final fantasy 14 themed stuff yeah like just um, all the time it's a permanent cafe uh in akihabara yeah well uh and it's pretty good like all this was just maybe 30 bucks for all this food for all of it yeah but because on the top side is all these stuff um she got a parfait of some kind let's because they were doing like a valentine's day thing so that's their valentine parfait that's like a i don't know if that's iced coffee or or thai tea but it has a, like a little moogle marshmallow on top yeah yeah uh and then all her things has like faces on it like that yellow thing is a fat chocobo dumpling okay um yeah we went with like a group of seven of uh, uh seven to this one i think it was no it was six you Go with like other people. What? What do you mean? Um. Well, Oli's brother and his friend didn't want to do this one, so they didn't. They didn't come. But Tivan was here with us for this one, and Tivan's boyfriend came as well. Nice. Uh. So we we came to this, and like we didn't realize with every order you get like a, a random coaster, and there were so we all ordered a bunch of little things because we wanted to try everything and see what it's like. So we had so you get many all these coasters. coasters. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. It was bad, but it was good. Yeah. You still got to try everything. So. Oh, yeah. Well, not everything. There's still so much more on the menu, oh, which man. is good for a permanent place. It, there should be a lot. Um, I would go back because it's cool. They do they do a point card for this because they're permanent. Um, you fill a point card, you get rewards. Uh, we ordered enough in this one sitting to get rewards on a point card. And then the next reward is a bigger reward, but it's... Mm-hmm like triple of what you ordered. Oh, wow. Previously. So, I mean, hopefully the rewards will still, uh, you know. I don't think it honor. expires. Okay. Well, yeah. There you go. Um, but like Final Fantasy fourteen Cafe, that's one of the things I really wanted to do. Um, I want to do a lot of themed cafes, personally. Yeah. yeah. Uh, sad that the Capcom Cafe didn't a theme that I wasn't that into. Um, the Square Enix Cafe also was, wasn't doing a thing I was into, so we didn't do those two at all. Mm-hmm. Um, but the next one is from the Kirby Cafe. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Wow. This Yellow. this is also a permanent cafe. Um, nice. Except it wasn't really that good. Oh. It's very aesthetic. You're very right. aesthetic. I can see that. But food wise, it was okay. Like I don't know. I didn't like the pizza was fine. The uh, in that pink Kirby thingy. Mm-hmm. Uh, container is a loco moco, which is actually not bad. Okay. Um, and you get to keep the container, so that's in my that's in my case right here. Oh, good. Actually. Is it a know. what is it, a plastic case or what? It's a little plastic thing. Okay. Oh, sh- never emptied it. Yeah, so it's a little plastic thing. Um, it's got a little Kirby face on it. It's a little ball. Yeah, uh, it says Kirby Cafe on the back. Nice. Um, you could also get it as uh, they have a, a an orange one for mm-hmm. a waddle D. Yeah. If you wanted that one instead. Mm-hmm. Um it opens it opens up. Oh, that's what's inside. Uh, it's my coin purse from this trip to Japan. <laughs> did you pick up the coin? Are... Did you pick up the coin purse in Japan or yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh the thing because coins are actually very useful in Japan. The hundred yen coin is used for all the vending machines, all the specifically arcades and gotchas, you take only hundred yen coins. Okay. Um Okay. And they have like a 500 yen coin, so that's like a two dollar coin. No kidding. Okay. So you should be using those. Nice. Um, yeah. Well, it looks like it was, you know, 
don't know. It looked it looked good. It was a lot of stuff. It's very but, cute. Yeah, so cute. exactly. Again, kawaii. <laughs> yeah. So that was a locomoco in that pink Kirby thing. Uh-huh. Um, we got to keep this pizza plate here. Uh, you didn't have to, but every, oh uh, yeah, you didn't have to, but Oli said yes to all the souvenirs when they asked. Um, okay. So that's like a, a seafood pizza, and I forgot what the other one was, but it's kind of weird because if you look at it, it has like those fried noodle snacks um, that you can get that like, you just munch the on. The crunchy there. ones, right? The country. Yeah. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. I don't know what those stars are. It, it was a weird pizza. Okay. Um, there's like an apple, like a mold wine there. Um, huh. That Cur- Kirby car dessert yeah. thing. Mm-hmm. It's like a moose. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's only one per table. Got they it. limit that. So mm-hmm. we had to get it. Somebody had to get it at our table. Um, what else? That plate, the that little, I don't even know what that is anymore. It's okay. a biscuit thing or croissant, it looks like, with soft serve on top. We have that plate. Uh, that's one of the souvenir plates we got. Uh, that Kirby burger uh, mm-hmm. with that uh, tomato thing. We didn't get the tomato cup, sadly, but we did the, because that's not an option. But that plate was also keep was also a souvenir that Oli picked up. Man, that's and crazy. I think, yeah. And then that's like a that little Kirby thing on top of a I think it was a milk tea. Oh, okay. So that uh-huh. was, that's Kirby marshmallow. Super cute. Oh cute. Yeah. And Is then this uh, little Yeah, yeah, it's a marshmallow. Okay. Yeah. So you, you can party your drink. And that little parfait thing, which Oli says is barely a parfait because it's just like jelly on the uh, and soft serve on top, yeah. so she doesn't really count it as parfait, right? Okay, it's pretty good. Um, it uh, for our share, so this is only in my order. Mm-hmm. It was like 110 bucks. No, oh, man. 100 bucks, which is like one of the more expensive. It's it's yeah, on the pricier side mm-hmm. of of the theme cafes, but also the souvenirs add extra, right? To the yes. to the cost. So mm-hmm. without the souvenirs, it probably would have been a total of. 70 bucks total mm-hmm, which isn't mm-hmm. too bad for all this food but it wasn't delicious yeah sadly. yeah that's too bad which you would hope for kirby themed things because kirby's all about the food that's right he just eats everything yeah well i yeah. guess that's what it is he eats everything doesn't matter <laughs> with everything like us yeah <laughs> we're little kerbos um <laughs> nice uh the next pick that we have is that also from yeah. the same place or, or d- this is a different no place this now? one's from the monster hunter cafe I thought um, you went to a mon- so oh wait no that was the capcom store but this is actually a cafe <laughs> i see for monster Hunter. this, and this... is also another permanent one. Oh, okay man that's pretty cool yeah they keep the themes yeah 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 which is I, honestly one of the better cafes that we went to for sure okay um like that meat that meat thing is just all roast beef um oh man Okay. Which is supposed to be a dragon's tail, because mm-hmm. in Monster Hunter you can cut off the tail and then you carve it for materials. Got it. Uh, which is cool. That's just fries in a bucket. That's like your delivery, uh, supplies delivery. Um, an iconic thing in Monster Hunter is that meat on a bone thing, because uh, you need you cook it, you grill it yourself in the game, uh, and if you time it wrong, it's burnt. So that it has to be oh. perfectly, perfectly okay. well done. Which in this case it is. Um, Oli said it was just a meatloaf. Uh, wrapped in bacon. Oh, so we don't we don't know what it was going to be, but that's what it was. Just the bone is a real bone, and they just made a meatloaf. Well, maybe it's not that's the worst cool. thing. Okay. Yeah, I mean, she was fine with it. She said it was still good. Nice. Uh, a couple of drinks. One of Oli's drink is that white one, which is supposed to represent a Kezu, one of her favorite monster. Mm-hmm. I forgot what my drink was supposed to be. That that middle one. Uh, but, yes, the. The blue, but the then blue you have one. all these other various smaller. Um... Yeah, on this right one is mm-hmm. just honestly, I don't. It's it's a mega potion, but you mix it yourself. Um, I'm pretty sure this is all just simple simple syrups with food coloring. Yeah, <laughs> but still, it was cool because it changed the color of the the big jar eventually. Yes, yes. Um, and it was like a a like a sprite kind of kind of soda. Okay, all right. Yeah, so that was that was cool. That's uh, one of my favorite cafes because then afterwards we had the the desserts. Is um, that this? Yeah. So in the newest game, Monster Hunter Rise, uh, you power up by eating the dango, uh, these bunny dango here, um, 
what is I don't it called? Remember. Dango, and they're they're called bunny dangos because they put like little pretzels on top to give them the oh, bunny yeah. ears. Uh huh. Yeah. So what what do they yeah. taste? What are these? Is this? Uh... It's mochi. Oh, it's mochi. Okay. Yeah. Nice. It's like tricolor mochi, basically. So okay. I don't remember what the I don't remember what the flavors are, but the green one's obviously matcha flavor. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, and then on the right is one is the parfait that they have here that they offer uh, here, which is honestly really cool. Okay. Like that's a that's a one of the better parfaits that we had. Definitely, definitely more of a parfait than the the last one we saw. The curvy one, yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. This is supposed to be a Kirin parfait, so it's like a lightning, uh, unicorn kind of thing. Okay. So that's why it has that cone. <laughs> I see it. It's pretty yes. good. It's pretty good. And those blue are just like sugar thingies. You know how you drip sugar to make a to make a shape kind of thing. Yeah. 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 It's had. Got hella whipped cream. It's got cream puffs in there. It's got soft serve. It's got chocolate. It's good. It was a good parfait. Uh, we actually ordered two because Oli had hers, and I was I tasted it, and I was like, "Oh, I want one oh, for my own." So we yeah. actually I ordered one after the fact. Um, That's how much I liked it. I, you know, not really directly related, but I just gotta say, whenever you say Monster Hunter, it's okay. So Monster Hunter, uh, it's a it's a very fa- uh very big franchise of games that Capcom does. Um. Bit, a lot bigger in Japan. It got recently got bigger worldwide with Monster Hunter World. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's just up to four people hunting monsters like dinosaurs, dragons, um, to collect their parts to make armor and weapons of these parts, and then hunting other monsters. So this is like a like a console game, right? Yeah, console PC. Okay. Um, originally. They start on at least recently. It's either PlayStation and then it goes to PC eventually, like a year later. Mm-hmm. For Monster Hunter Rise, it was Nintendo Switch, and then a year and a half later, it went to PC. I see. But I gotta say, traditionally, you know, whenever you um, say Monster Hunter, mm-hmm. I'm always thinking. Of, I somehow just think of Monster Ranchers, which is not the same <laughs> franchise. It is not the same franchise. No, <laughs> Monster Rancher is you find discs, uh, ancient discs of monsters' DNA and sa- fossils, basically, and you resurrect these monsters from said discs. Yes, exactly. Which is also another cool concept. And yes. they did make Monster Rancher games as well. Um, yes, I, where I, you would plug in your your own like extra CDs or DVDs yes, and see what, comes, yes. what monster comes I, out. Yeah, uh, I remember playing that uh, on the ah. PlayStation. Um, yeah. And uh, that, that's it's the only really reason. Concept. That's the only reason why I remember, you know, that I know it was a, oh, a TV show as well. Um, yes. You know, they, they brought didn't it make here, an anime. but uh, yeah, I don't know. I mean, it didn't catch on for me, but um, no, but it didn't catch on in general. That's, uh, but that's the only thing. That's just the thing that I think of uh, in this case. <laughs> I just confuse them. Mm, so that's fair. It's a one word difference. <laughs> it's four letter different. Act, I even. Yeah. So, so um, Monster Hunter. So that I mean, that sounded like that cafe was um was pretty strong, pretty high up there as far as like the ones that you like, I guess. Yeah, definitely up there with um that cafe was a good one too. Okay, can you explain what this cafe is now? This is a coupon cafe. It's more for like the the IT kind of people. I don't know. It's a it was Oli's cafe. One of mm-hmm. her the cafe she wants to because the parfait there she really likes and it, it was it looked good. I didn't I didn't try it. But Did you say parfait? Is that a parfait? Yeah, they had like a no. This is not. No, oh. this is a cake. I don't remember. I was, was expecting it? on when I saw it. You remember that uh, cheddar cheesecake that we had in Texas? I forgot where it was oh, from. One of the barbecue um, spots. Was it? Was it a cake? Old it was a um, service, new school barbecue. Or yes, yes, that was Leroy and Lewis. I was trying to remember like what it was yes. exactly. Um, it was a cheddar cheesecake. Oh, okay. It was a yeah, cheesecake. That's what I but thought. With ch- I think you're right. Yeah, cheddar instead of cream cheese. Yeah. Yeah, I'm trying to remember now. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I saw the picture for this. I thought. I thought that's what it was. I was like, oh, let give me that. Give me that uh-huh. cheesecake. Yeah. It's not cheesecake. Oh. It's a wedge of cheese, aesthetically, but it's a. Uh, it's like a lemon cake. Oh, okay. Which so, is fine. It's not bad. Right. It's just not what I wanted. Exactly. It's deceiving. So yeah, I wanted a cheddar cheesecake. <laughs> I'm very sad. Give the man his cheddar cheesecake, please. Yeah. Um, but uh, the thing about this place, Coupot, they're known for making like accessories of food. Like this yeah. is probably was a necklace that they used to sell. Mm-hmm, uh, mm-hmm. Not that size, of course, but because uh, oh, I know only has bad. a lot of macaron. Um, 
a uh, macaron necklace of theirs they used they did a collab with demon slayer mm-hmm. where mm-hmm. um like the characters were inside of cakes or whatever yeah as necklaces like they're they're a pretty cool cool brand for stuff okay i'm just very salty that this is not cheddar cheesecake well, and maybe. I will never buy from them again. No, <laughs> it's all lies. It's a scam, basically. I, <laughs> basically, I get, I get it. I get it. Um, <laughs> but you were talking about uh, parfaits earlier. Is this the par? I don't know. What is a parfait no, again? A, uh, parfait is like basically a dessert in a tall cup, right, with layers of stuff. Layers, uh, in, in yes. Yeah, the Shrek. layers are the important Thank you. part. Yes, yes. yes. Uh, yes, girls. the onion. Yes. Um, but this is not that. No, this is another cafe that we went to that only didn't get to go last time. This was an Ikebukuro. Uh, it's called Milky Way Cafe. Mm-hmm. They have a bunch of parfaits based on astrology. Uh, I did not get the Gemini because I wasn't that into it. Uh, but I did get this. It's like an I forgot what it was called, but it's basically an avocado. Okay, I mean and ice like cream wafer. and coffee. Yes, ice yeah. cream and coffee with with whipped cream. Looks like nuts and a wafer. Okay. It was good. All right. I also got a like a takoyaki dish there. So that's Let's... that's why I didn't get a parfait. Okay. That's this. But, uh, yes. Takoyaki okay. dori, I think. Takoyaki, I don't know. Like that's the fried octopus balls. Octopus. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And then it's got it, that's like a rice and cheese under and cream guess. and butter. Or uh, broccoli. It was good just, though. It was like that one piece of broccoli, just like Stand it alone. makes it healthy. It, it's a it's a healthy dish now. <laughs> it's got vegetables. No, I get it. I mean, of it's got course. Vegetable. Okay. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Okay. To be uh, fair. Yeah, no, I get it. Is cheese a vegetable? Yeah. I mean, that's uh, that's a dairy, right? <laughs> it, maybe in our food groups. <laughs> um, where so this was from the same place. I mean, that yes, we just talked about. Way Cafe. Okay. Um, yeah. How, I'm just curious, like we're um, from the play, the f- last few places we talked about. I mean, like mm-hmm. where, how far are these from each other? Um, Q Pot is in Omotosando, which is like the station right before you get to Shibuya Station on the Ginza Line. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's like basically half hour from our hotel, uh, and then Milky Way Cafe is in Ikebukuro which is maybe another 10 minute ride from Omotosando. But uh, I think South. No idea. I never looked at the map. I just like, ah, this station or that station. That's all okay. I need. I didn't right. look at the actual directions. People can look it up. It's fine. Um, yeah. Okay. I do see a few others here. Uh, this one looks interesting. It looks like a familiar. Yeah. Uh, the next few pictures are from disneyland oh when disney we went to tokyo disney hold on there's like 20 different disney things right i don't even know there's 20 uh, maybe around the world but there's two different disneys in <laughs> japan <laughs> no there's like a lot right um oh no. in <laughs> japan or in japan i thought no no no. there's two different disneylands in japan okay so like we have two here in la um they have the regular disneyland which is basically smaller version like less stuff version of our disneyland uh-huh. but in a much wider open space which is really nice because you could walk there and not feel crowded it was great okay. yeah um that was where we went this time we didn't because uh, nobody else had been like Oli and i we've been to tokyo disney sea um which is their version of california adventure okay i guess if you want to do it that way um and we both agree that it's cooler Cause it's more unique. It's got like the stuff that we won't have here. Yeah. But everybody else wanted to do Tokyo Disney, which is just the regular Disneyland. Cause okay. they've never been and they are like, eh. So they were more excited for that, which I'm a little sad for. Cause Tokyo Disney sea is, it's so much cooler. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. It's got, it's got Ariel's grotto where it's an actual like themed area of the park instead of just one ride. It's got 20,000 leagues under the sea. It's got journey to the center of the earth. It has an Agrabah section. Um, it has Aquatopia, which I like more than our Autopia. Okay. Although uh, Aquatopia is just, you just sit there. You don't actually pretend to control it. Oh, I see. So, yeah. Okay. All right. Um, but anyway, anyway, we did Tokyo Disney this time, which was, like, to be fair, I hadn't been. So I was like, all right, let's see. Let's see what it's all about. Mm-hmm. 
it was just Disneyland, but more spacious with less stuff. Right. Um, but also they had a lot of different popcorn buckets. Like they weren't sold out of their popcorn buckets. So you had popcorn too? Oh yeah. Okay. Somewhere. I don't know. I bought my sister like a, the small, it's a small world popcorn bucket. Cause like it has like moving parts. You pull out a thing where it has the, the section that's a cuckoo clock basically for small world. Yeah. And the, the window pops out and the, mm-hmm, the and mm-hmm. thing actually pops out of it, which is really cool for mm. a popcorn bucket. Okay. Um, they also had like a, a Winnie the Pooh one, which was a honey pot with Winnie on top. Uh, with Winnie on top. Yeah. They had a, a Sleeping Beauty one, which was the rose thing and like a stained glass style, but it lights up. Um, so I don't know. They had cool pop stuff, and it, that wasn't sold out, you know. Yeah. Well, but onto this thing. Yeah. It's a Baymax burger. It's like a Baymax. It's uh, a Bow burger. Okay. And I'm very, okay. very sad at how it came out. It's just. Baymax deflating, I guess. <laughs> it's fine. Like, whatever. I, I, I don't know what I was, I don't know why I expected better. It's like the fast food expectation versus reality kind of thing, you know? Yeah. Yeah. The picture versus, versus what they actually serve you. So what's in the, what is it? What, what's in it? I think it was Chashu. Okay. I don't remember. So it's more, of a, sad it's, more of a bun. It looks, it's more of a bun. I guess then. so. Okay. I don't remember. Okay. Just, look at him. He's so wrinkly and sad. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's, it's too bad. I'm, and he's falling apart on the bottom left. Yeah. Yeah. He needs help. He, need, yeah. he needs another Baymax for, <laughs> for himself. Yeah, a little sad. But it's like, eh, whatever. It's like two bucks, uh, three bucks. Mm-hmm. Can't complain. No, not at all. Uh, okay. Yeah. And then we got yeah, some. So next, next one is the, their frozen treats that we saw. Um a Mickey ice bar, which is tropical flavor. So I was like, all right. And a tiramisu ice cream sandwich. Mm-hmm. Uh, I had the ice cream sandwich. Oli had the, the Mickey ice bar. It was cool. And the next picture you can actually, uh, actually, no, I didn't, I don't have one of the ice bar, but it actually looked like that. It wasn't like, you know, the ice cream trucks where it's all sad and melted Sonic face. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it that's... not look like that. Thankfully. So this is better. Wait, oh, is yeah. this ice cream? I don't know. Wait, this yeah, is this ice, cream, the ice right? cream sandwich. Yeah, the tiramisu okay. ice cream sandwich. It's got a little Mickey imprint, which is yeah. cool. Um, and it was, you know, it's actually good. It actually tastes like tiramisu. Um, so, is do you think this is better than like any like from our frozen treats or whatever, like from what we serve up at Disneyland? No, these oh. are smaller, <laughs> which is the important fact. A very important factor. <laughs> Just by virtue of size, it's already doomed. Yeah. It's a yeah, yeah. It's different flavors though, which is nice. Mm-hmm. It is nice. Um we didn't get any churros because we were a little sad about the churros there. Um they used to be in the like the the pipe that they squeeze it out of or whatever for the yeah. dough. It used to be Mickey shaped. Yeah. But now it's just the regular pipe churro shape, huh. which is very sad. I did not know they have churros at Disney, Tokyo Disney, which is great. Yeah. Do they, 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 do. they do. do you know if they happen to serve churros like it, you know, all the other theme parks. I have like, no idea. Oh. I assume they do. Okay. Like, just because it's a Disney thing at this point. Everyone gets it because they had a turkey leg as well at this one. Yeah. Oh, wow. Okay. So that's good. I it is, a, they have it it is a staple. That's good. Yeah. Is um, that's great. Is this next one also part of Disney or? No, we, we bounced from Disney already. Oh. <laughs> um, because oh. I wasn't like, I was like, whatever about that Disneyland. If oh. it was Disney Sea, I probably would have been there a little longer. How but long do you spend at uh, Tokyo Disney? Maybe it was only like six, seven hours. Okay. No, that's a lie. It was like five hours that we were there. Got it. Okay. Because the rides that I really wanted to go to were like 120 minute wait. I was like, oh, hell no. Oh, wow. The, well, okay. the new ride that just opened like recently there was 180 minute wait. I was like, I oh, whatever. I don't care that much. I'd yeah. rather spend my time doing something more interesting. Exactly. Right. Okay. So yeah. where is this now? So we only and I went to Tokyo Station because uh, we were just wandering around. It was just us two because the rest of the group stayed at Disneyland longer. But we oh, bounced because okay. we were just like, eh, let's go explore. Um, so we were at Tokyo Station. It was like dinner time. We were looking for something specific, but we didn't find it. So we just stopped here uh, to get a snack before we kept looking. Uh, it's like a like a Salisbury steak omelet rice kind of thing. Interesting. Okay. Which was just in the station, which is cool because Tokyo Station is huge. Mm-hmm. Like it's got, it's one of the biggest stations in in Tokyo and it's got hella 
hello anime stuff hello characters character stores like Rilakkuma and Senrio stuff yeah um and also a lot of food a lot of food options like there were a bunch of different sushi places there were a bunch of different omurice places a bunch of different just bars um in the station so that was really cool uh, i forgot which what this place is called but it was an omurice that caught our eye because it also had meat of course yes um is yeah. this is this one this it looks like a ramen uh thing is that also from you know no this one's on the second to last day we were in yokohama oh okay um so this is just we were we had to leave because the mall everything was closed the malls at least were closing down mm. um and this is just one of the random ramen places we found on the side uh on the way back to the station got it and it was good and what kind of ramen very hearty broth okay uh mm -hmm. it's like a tonkatsu good, uh, just or what tonkatsu. okay tonkatsu yeah mm -hmm, mm -hmm. the very hearty broth it was it's good it was like 400 yen mm. it was great nice um oh they also had that little if you head back uh -huh. um that bottle on the top left is like a, a coke bottle yes it was like this big it was so tiny <laughs> um not that i'm against it it was cute but like right. i would have gotten to if i knew exactly exactly yeah um it's not a regular portion size no no not even a kid's portion size here my god no of course not it's it's fine. It was good. It was cheap. Okay. Uh, so on the way back, it was everything was closed down already. But this is like the we were headed back to our hotel. It was so we walked through the temple to get there because it was empty, so it's faster. Um, mm -hmm. And this is that that area I was telling you about that have, would have had all the open stalls right in front of the yeah as yeah. you walk to the shrine. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Very cool. What what around what time would this be already? I think it was around eleven p.m. Okay, because we were coming back f to also go to Don Quixote to get our big luggage that we mm -hmm. were our, uh, that we were going to take back home. Okay, got it. Speaking of Which, luggage, uh, it looks like yeah, uh, leads to this one. I mean, you you've really yeah, yeah. So coming into Japan, there were six of us, right, with one personal item and one carry on. We ended up all leaving with also at least one check in. Um, we all bought a, a one check in there at place. Um, I also brought in a duffel bag, like I brought an empty duffel bag in my carry on originally. So I had mm -hmm. three bags when I left and it's just the lady at the reception desk was like, my God, y'all, why did you, how did y'all buy so much? Wow. She counted it and I think it ended up being like 26 or 27 bags mm -hmm. between six people. Really? Yeah. So I don't even know how that happened. She was including like the backpacks and personal items, I guess. But still, this is all we came in as a group with one carry on, one uh, personal item each, and this is all what we're leaving with after two weeks. Amazing, crazy. Did anyone have to pay extra for you know carry on or anything? You know what? Surprisingly, not. Like we were all like weighing. We're just feeling it out, right? Seeing how much stuff weighed. And I thought, and not just me, but I and uh, Oliver and Nina, they, those two go to the gym a lot. So I, would, I thought they would be more accurate at guessing. Mm -hmm. But we all thought that Oli went over and that Nina would have gone over the 50-pound weight limit. None was, no one was even close. I don't even, like, I don't know how, if the scale at the airport was broken or if we're <laughs> all just a lot weaker now than, than we thought. Wow. I don't know. Okay. But it looks like you brought back a lot. Not as uh, I brought, I probably brought back the least out of everybody. Okay. Um, I ended up buying, but I ended up because all my crap that I bought was small, freaking games. Got it. Uh, uh -huh. A few, like maybe an outfit, one, only one outfit with the one Kirito jacket mm -hmm. from Sword Art Online. But, okay. Okay. But like, only bought a lot of poofy stuff. Like she bought a big jacket. Yeah. She bought mm -hmm. a bunch of dresses. So packing for her was a little harder. Yeah, totally. Um, and like figures and stuff, so. Okay. But my God, we can't, we, I don't know, man. If we ever, the next time I go back, I don't want to end up like this. Yeah, yeah. But I probably will. Okay. Because I, it's, it's Japan. I have no self-control when I'm in, on vacation. Of course. 
Um, but it looks like you did bring back some things for yourself, like you said. Uh, you got a. Yeah, I just wanted to highlight this because all this stuff would be like well over four hundred dollars if I bought it here. Yeah. Um, and it was like maybe three hundred total because I bought it in Japan. I think okay. less, honestly, okay. if I remember correctly. So it's like. I hate how expensive stuff is here. So yeah, we're looking at uh, five Switch games, three PS5 games. Yeah. Um, the like a couple of them are new too. Like like just came out. Like that the the Yakuza like uh, Infinite Wealth or yeah. was just came out in what January February. Tears of the Kingdom just came out last year, and that would never that won't go on sale at all for another four years because Nintendo sucks. Yeah. Uh, same thing as Super Mario Brothers Wonder. Like that just came out last year. It was never going on sale. Maybe another three years. Of course, yeah. Yeah, so it's like I'm just so amazed how much how much cheaper stuff is over there. And I'm very sad that we have to pay so much more here. <laughs> That's pretty good. Um so let's see what is it? Yeah, I mean that that would be a pretty hefty haul, but uh, price wise, but I mean you said how much? Like I think it was under 300. Okay. Nice. After converting the yen, which is insane. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But also, most of that was tax free. So I guess that's part of it too. Like, okay. You don't have to pay for tax if you don't, if you're planning to not open it while you're in Japan. Mm-hmm. So that's nice. actually kind of a cool thing that, that you can do while internationally traveling, which I didn't really know of last time I went. Sadly. But because it was a thing then too, I just didn't really take advantage of it. Like a fool. I guess you'll know for next time. Um, yeah. Next time I travel anywhere. Okay. Man, that was a shoot. That was quite an epic, you know, kind of uh, trip that you took. Um, do, you, do you feel that uh, that amount of time for the places that you visited? Do you think that was like the right amount of time or just like good enough? Or No. Oh, <laughs> definitely not. <laughs> I would have been there longer if I could. Yeah. Um, honestly, Nowhere near enough time in Kyoto. I didn't realize yeah. it, was, it was only two full days of right. a city I've never been to ever. Right. So next time I go, definitely want to spend more time in Kyoto. Um, okay. Okay. But also go other places we haven't been to either, like mm. further further west into Osaka, where the um, USJ is Universal Studios Japan, because mm-hmm. that's far from Tokyo, but closer to Osaka. Okay. Nice. I can finally see Harry Potter Land because I still haven't seen it here. Right. Um, from all the places that you visited, uh, let's say food wise, what are the ones that uh, stand out? Let's 100%, say, the, of course, the Kaiseki, right? The, oh, yes. The, the nine, the nine in, course. The Seki Senkan, nine yes. course meal. Yeah. Of course, that you can't. Yeah. You're not going to beat that, honestly. Mm-hmm. That, that Wagyu specifically. Yes. One of the best things I ate while I was there. Okay. Uh, what else? Honestly, Final Fantasy Cafe, because you right. can get a lot of good food for little there and it's themed stuff. So I, it's a theme I like, mm-hmm. but also Yoshinoya, you know, cause yes. cheap food, good, cheap food. And it's a, I, I like Yudon specifically. Like I do like beef bowls a lot. Mm-hmm. So I, I like Yoshinoya even here. It's just so expensive in comparison. That's right. Uh, okay. My, my number one thing, whole trip. Yeah. That canned corn soup. Of course, it's yes. Just so clutch when you're cold <laughs> and you're outside and you have no gloves. You're wearing a windbreaker with only one layer under. That's right. Um, and it was good because I like corn. You know, right. I am corn kid as a grown up. Good. Um, and it was very nostalgic too because that was one of my favorite things when I first went six mm. years ago. Yes. So now to be reunited once again. Yeah, it was like the first thing I. <laughs> It's like, it was the first vending machine thing I bought for sure. Yeah, yeah. Because um, it's just the best thing I've ever had. Amazing. So useful. It's yeah, amazing. yeah. Just in the warm embrace of canned corn. Yeah. Oh my god, <laughs> I was gonna. I would have died without that corn soup. Honestly, like I didn't realize how cold I was. Uh, yeah, exactly. Um, it it really, it really carried you. That's good. Yeah. Um, as far as any non food, um. There's like a couple of things that uh, people need to try stick out. Uh, that I wanted to try or, or no, no. Well, I mean that people should, yeah. Consider visiting for sure. Doing like 
renting a kimono and going through some temple areas. Like mm. I really enjoyed wearing my kimono to go around the um Kimizadera area. Yeah. But I'm also a big weeb, so I don't know if that's not your thing. Um, the arcades are cool. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Like they have a lot of retro arcades, even. Um, so if you're into retro games, the arcades, there are a lot of retro arcades, uh, or even like new newer stuff. Like right now, the big game in Japan is like some sort of Gundam fighting game. Mm-hmm. Uh, like one of the arcades I went to had a whole floor dedicated to it. No so, kidding. Okay. Well, it's definitely good. worth checking out. And then um, anything you would try to? I know again, like time wise, you would. You know, it wasn't quite enough for certain things, but I mean, like, um, yeah, just any general uh, tips or anything for these aspiring travelers. Um, Keep an eye on the weather. Yeah, definitely look up the weather before you go. <laughs> okay, you know, don't don't die in the snow. Makes um, sense. Also, I don't know. There's just so much to do. Mm-hmm. You can't really do it all in one trip. So don't try. Just enjoy. Take it I mean, slow. You're saying don't do try. Trips. Don't okay. Don't try to like do everything at once. You mean not all at once. You're okay. gonna miss out on something. And you're gonna feel sad. Yeah. So definitely, just it's okay doing multiple trips. There's so much there that it won't be a waste of a trip. Because I know some people don't want to go to the same place twice. Mm-hmm. Um, I think with Japan, you can go to the same place twice and still see so many new things that you wouldn't have otherwise. Yeah, that's nice. Okay. So, I mean, when is, uh, when is the next trip? <laughs> so I was supposed to go to Australia next year to visit my friend over there, but, uh, might be trying to convince her to meet us in Japan. Instead. There you go. <laughs> That's the way to do it. I think. Uh, yeah, so we'll see. Okay, good. Well, glad you had a, a great time. Um, and you know, I hope we get to do it again and, uh, Oh yeah. Man, I, I don't remember if I said this earlier, I'm retiring there. Yes, Exactly. Um, I'll, uh, I don't know. I still have to make my way out there. It's, uh, definitely very exciting. Um, very exciting. I, I just said one other thing, like what, how was it to, um, like communicate with, you know, people over there? Oh, um, it's not, it's actually not too bad. Uh, mm-hmm. train stations, there's, uh, all the signs are in English as well as Japanese. Mm-hmm. They usually have, um, the bigger stations at least have staff that know English, um, most hotels have staff that know English. So at the very least, if you need directions or uh, just help finding your way, uh, finding your way around or any recommendations to some stuff. Yeah. It's pretty good. Like, okay. It, and then a lot of like the tourist area, the tourist attractions, like the Miffy cafe, mm-hmm, uh, the, mm-hmm. the, the, um, the theme cafes in general have English speaking, at least one English speaking staff person. Mm. So it's very, it's easy to to communicate ish and if not like some of the smaller stuff that we went to we just google translate is actually really useful okay um we're able to have an actual conversation just by typing into our phone and wow uh having it go go through that's great man okay again uh japan's living in the future uh, in many ways yeah. so um yeah definitely uh add that to uh to the bucket list i guess but yeah we'll do that cool um yeah i uh, got anything else for the people i mean they um you really gave them a lot we really came back with uh swinging so yeah i was i was like ah, maybe i didn't send enough pictures because uh, <laughs> of my 900 but i was like oh that actually ended up being more 900 more is uh that. it's probably more than enough at least you know but um more to come right i think so oh yeah definitely gonna add to that but uh, with that said, I think we've come to the end of another episode. So thank you, my chow. Um, welcome back. And, uh, I, you know, got to finish your contract. Anyway, <laughs> thank you again. Uh, and thank you to our few and only fans for joining us. We're excited to bring you more of our adventures with good food and good people. Uh, remember, reach out. We're here on Instagram. I'm at Dumb and Hungry. He's at uh, my underscore chow. Also reach out to uh, Don Quixote over there. You can email us at hi at dumbandhungry.com where you can send us your feedback and your love letters. Uh, find, the, <laughs> find the videos sure on I'm YouTube. <laughs> what you like, subscribe, and, and smash. Uh, you can also find us on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and wherever else fine podcasts are served. But until next time, I'm Angelo, the Dumb and Hungry. I'm my show. And on your next food adventure, remember to try one of each. Wow, that was uh, that's quite the marathon. Yeah, it was a lot longer than I thought it was going to be.
<laughs> I didn't think that had that much stuff to send.